your eternal identity and your relationship with Krishna and so many other things. But at least we can make our words and our actions the same. And if we speak something, then we can take responsibility for doing it. And if we speak something that involves the welfare of other people, then then we, because of circumstances or whatever, we have to change our commitment. Then we have to we be responsible for telling those people the full truth about why and so on like that. They have a need to know. Uh, so there's so many things about truthfulness that people in general don't follow uh, because they don't have the moral strength, they don't have the, the strength of character to just own up and take the full consequences of their actual activities. So they try to cover them up in the hope that they will be able to escape the actual uh, reactions. Not knowing that Krishna is in charge of everything and Krishna knows exactly what's going on and not realizing or I mean I don't know how it's possible when you read a history not to understand that every secret comes out sooner or later. The truth always comes out. It might be today, tomorrow, next week, a hundred years from now, but it will come out. It's usually sooner than later though. Because why? A truth is known by a person's actions. Actions speak louder than words. So if a person says one thing and does something that is completely disharmonious, you know what their real thing is, it's their actions. Uh, they can say very nice flowery words. Well, what, words are cheap. What's that? The words are empty. They're empty, yes. Empty words are they're worse than cheap. Huh? Their net value is negative. Why should we uh, take the time and energy to speak words that we don't stand behind, that, we're, that are not commitments? Everything we speak should be a commitment. And we take responsibility for those commitments. That's how we have made a successful Vaishnava Sangha. I'll be very honest with you. Huh? If we were like typical Hare Krishnas, like typical ISKCON, um, typical or religions anywhere, uh, but especially uh, for some reason, the, uh, the ISKCON devotees seem to take a special pleasure in lying. And, and making false commitments. And I've never been able to tolerate that. And I always have spoken up whenever I saw it going on. And I always got in trouble for it. <laughs> because in ISKCON, the, the managers and everyone is doing this. Huh? But Prabhupada never did it. If Prabhupada said he was going to do something, he did it. And if Prabhupada told you to do something, you better do it. Or you're going to be in trouble with him. You see, because Prabhupada always kept his word. Prabhupada was a true gentleman, one of the few that I've ever met. So Prabhupada set this standard, and we intend to follow it. And I think the best thing that we, that we can do in this regard is to make it a, a public issue, make it a principle. That if you join this community, you are expected to be truthful. This is why, for example, we require that when people join our social network, they upload a, a recognizable picture of their face. This is why we, we require their real email address, their real name, their real location, you see? Because we want them to be honest. We want them to be accountable for the things that they say on our network. We don't want people anonymously spamming our members. We want to keep our network and our community a safe place for transcendental spiritual activities. And the only way we can do that is to require truthfulness because trust is based on truth. If you have no assurance that a person uh, is telling the truth to you, then how can you trust them? Yeah, this car I see it was owned by a little old lady, only drove it to church on Sundays. <laughs> right? Are you going to believe that? 
You better not. <laughs> you know, so this trust factor is very important in spiritual life because without a feeling of trust, how can people let down their guard and tell the real truth so that we can help them? If they won't tell us the truth, we can't do a thing to help them. Huh? In fact, if they can't tell us the truth, we don't even want to associate with them because it's very dangerous to associate with people who are sociopathic, who can't tell the truth, who are compulsive liars, see? Compulsively, habitually covering up the whole truth. Right? Because it means they've done something that, that is bad. They're shamed. They're running from reality. Huh? They, uh, they are exploiting, and so they're assuming that others are also exploiting. And so they don't dare tell the truth. They can't trust. They can't trust because they assume other people are like them. And they're not trustworthy, so other people must not be trustworthy either. And we don't want to create an environment like that. And we don't want to uh, cultivate or uh, host people who are like that. Uh, we would rather have a small network of 20 or 30 people who are all completely trustworthy and where you can discuss anything openly and get real help, you see, than have a big site with hundreds or thousands of members and nobody is speaking the truth. Everybody's using a false name, false picture. Um, you know, that's, that's horrible. You go on MySpace or something like that, you don't know who you're talking with. See? So we don't want that. Our, uh, our idea is that in the world that uh, where you have huge forces and, co and corporate interests involved in creating individuation, in other words, breaking up communities and families. Individuation means that you, you uh, create a, a social environment where people are separated from one another. Uh, where they can't live together. They can't work together. There's always some friction. And that friction is based on doubt. And doubt is based on untrustworthiness. And untrustworthiness is based on lack of truthfulness. So it all comes back down to this lack of truth. When the heads of state and the heads of business and, and uh, all the big important people in the world are all spinning the truth, uh, in other words, they're lying, to speak plainly, then we know that there's real trouble in society because whatever the leaders do, the common people are also going to do. So when truthfulness becomes lost, then all good qualities are lost. Uh, we want to get away from that. So I think we're going to gradually introduce this fifth regulative principle of truthfulness because it's just as important, maybe even more important, than the four regulative principles and uh, introduce uh, tests. Uh, we, there are, uh, there's quite a bit of good scientific research on this subject, and uh, so we're going to look into that, we're going to research that, because we're tired of getting involved with people who basically cheat us. And uh, I especially have a tendency to be too trusting, uh, because I'm very trustworthy. I don't, you know, I don't do anything, I don't lie, I don't cheat, I don't steal. Uh, you know, all whatever money I have has come honestly, and uh, I, I don't have any need to hide secrets or anything. So when people uh, come to me and they seem to be helpful and, and positive and like that, I tend to trust them, maybe more than I should. Uh, and so, um, you know, my, my disciples are saying, oh, you can't let these people cheat you, Baba. <laughs> So, uh, okay, yeah, I guess, you know, it's happened two or three times now, so we need some safeguards against this, you know. So again, 
Uh, the rascals always wind up making things tougher for the good people, isn't it? So we're going to, we're going to have to introduce some safeguards uh, to keep the rascals from getting in. So are there any questions about anything that we talked about today? Um, trial by fire. What does that mean? Oh, because Sita was held prisoner by uh, uh, Ravana for some time, a couple of years, I think, actually. Um, 